Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and kittens, welcome back to the podcast. And thank you. Thank you very much. I I have to go more philosophical on this one than I usually do, and this is pretty much a philosophical channel uh, because this is more or less a philosophical discussion. But it's about your money, so I think it's okay to uh, to entertain this from a thirty thousand foot view because at this time in the crypto span journey of the DeFi, it's still a lot of it's theoretical. Crypto.com coin is what we are discussing today. And when you are discussing digital pay rails, it would not be in your best interest to disregard or ignore what they are doing in the space in regards to your valuations of your token of choice. There are a lot of players in this area. All right, there's a bunch Cody, AMP, Alchemy Pay, Assemble Protocol. There is just a lot of competition, and you knew there would be. Now, these are just the ones that I've discussed. That's not even all of them. Uh, each one of these is bringing unique features and benefits, but nobody has really captured all of the possibilities. And on a, if I had to be honest, I would say that Crow, they've probably gotten the closest so far, but we're still very early in this journey. Fortunately... The, the space is big. The payment space is massive. There doesn't have to just be one processor, which I consider the antithesis of decentralization anyway. You come to the DeFi to get away from centralization. And the tribalists, first thing that they want to do is centralize payments. Uh, no. There needs to be competition. And the more, the better. Let the users decide which ones last and which ones fade away capitalism at its finest there used to be a hundred billion crow they're, they're dead does that sound familiar to anyone amp empire hundred billion but they burned 70 percent of them and they kind of had to because crow uh crow rolled out to a main net if there was a single downside to all of the above mentioned tokens, Cody Amp, ACH, Assemble, it's that they are Ethereum tokens. And I get it. When they came into being, Ethereum was not having the problems that they are having now scaling, and it's going to get worse. But I got to admit, man, I love that Crow had the foresight to see it and realizing that they could not continue their development under Ethereum. So they did what they had to do, and Crow is now a mainnet. I consider this very downplayed. All right, it's, it's huge. It's huge because they can now manage their own system. They are not beholden to third-party validators and surging gas fees. They control it now. And if, I got to say it, man, if these other pay rails want to keep up, they better start figuring out how to get off from ERC, period. But I digress. Crow has some very big partnerships. Now, I consider the biggest being Visa. <laughs> yeah, they are partnered with Visa. Now, I can feel the hackles going up right now, but it is what it is. BitPay, they haven't went away either. They're partnered with MasterCard. Convert your crypto to fiat and spend fiat at MasterCard locations. Crow does the same thing with Visa. I don't love it, but I understand it. This is not spending crypto. This is spending fiat. But Visa is everywhere, like it or not. And the non-crypto public knows Visa. They don't know Crow. So if you want to spend your crypto anywhere right now, you can in a roundabout way. However, they are also in the process of allowing you to spend your crypto directly at specific merchants, just like Amp, just like Cody, just like, Al just like all of them. Uh, and the race is going to continue for all of these. But when I was reading the Crow white paper, this is my biggest takeaway from the whole thing. They were the only one, and I've been through all of them. They were the only one who at least addressed the elephant in the room, and they did it on page one verbatim. The uncertainty in tax legislation regarding 
and in relation to cryptographic tokens and digital assets may expose cryptographic token holders to tax consequences associated with the use or trading of cryptographic tokens. Now, this is a massive elephant in the room that we talk about on the podcasts, and it always seems to be dismissed as irrelevant. But it's not. It is very relevant. In the United States, crypto is not currency. It's property. And each and every time you sell it, whether on an exchange or use it for a purchase directly from a merchant, this is now a taxable event. And this is absolute fact. You ignore that at your own peril because I assure you, the IRS thinks it is very relevant and they are going to want their money. Amp, Cody, ACH, Assemble, we, it's the, we just leave it there as the elephant in the room. Pretend it's not happening. Crow at least mentions it. And this next is pure conjecture on my part, but you know what? I'm opinion editorial. I can give you uh, opinion. But they actually kind of have a mechanism in place to assist with it, that being consumer rewards cashback consumer rewards which are paid from the crow network if you are using the crow visa card that was not why they did it they did it to incentivize use the amp folks have been hollering for consumer incentive rewards for a while but it will be a welcome boon come tax time because the more you use it the more crypto you spend the more you are going to pay Crow has a lot more going on with it, and it is way too much to unpack in a single video. So we're going to be taking this one as a series and not a uh, how much, how high, how fast value of the token, but what it is actually doing and how it does it. We've always believed that if you know the token, you know what it does, know how it works, you can better understand the market it lives in and figure out what it's worth for yourself. And you know what, we don't give financial advice anyway. But if you're intimate with your product, you know where it should be. Next video, we will be unpacking the mainnet, unpacking the app, unpacking the mainnet trading features, unpacking the exchange. Yes, they have their own exchange now that they are in fact a mainnet. Like I said, there is a lot going on with this one. They've been in development for years, and it seems like uh, they're just they're really starting to rev the engine now. So, look, I hope you enjoyed this intro to Crow. I, I know it was very, very brief. There's just there's so much to talk about with this one. But now that the, the price sort of exploded on Coinbase, the money is pouring into it, $15 billion uh, fully liquid. But profiting on it and knowing what it does tend to be different things so we thought we would introduce our members to it expect a part two and a part three to this one in the next couple of days and until next time please stay safe and please be smart with your money that's it guys cheers